Hello, welcome back. This is going to be the first in hopefully an ongoing series where I'm going to be documenting my attempts at learning how to write code for the Spectrum Next. I'm starting from scratch, me, my Next, it's manual and access to the internet. I might end up making a game, I might end up making pretty patterns, I'm not quite decided yet. In this video, I'm going to look at ways to program it using languages like Basic, C and Z80. Then I'll explain which one I've picked and how I've set it up. Before we begin, I'm going to assume you know what a Spectrum Next is, or at least know what a ZX Spectrum is, or that you have some interest in programming. Think of these videos as notes on things I've learned. I'm not presenting the best or only way to do something, so please jump into the comments if you can think of a better way of doing something, or I'm doing it wrong. While obtaining the actual hardware can be difficult, you can still follow along by using an emulator, and in fact, unless you're the kind of person who enjoys swapping SD cards, you'll spend a lot of time testing code in an emulator anyway. So first, here's an overview of the three options that we have for writing code. Since the dawn of time, Spectrums have come with BASIC. It's the first language I learned to program in, and the Next does a very good job of introducing new users to both the machine and programming. It uses an updated Sinclair BASIC called Next BASIC, which adds some interesting new features, and it's also backwards compatible with the original Spectrums. Like previous machines, the Next comes with a manual that not only explains how to plug the machine in, but also how to write code in BASIC as if you've never used it before. This is one of the reasons I like the Next. It's not just a piece of hardware, it's an actual end product with a box, a manual and everything you need to get started. If all you want to do is try out a bit of code in between playing games, Next BASIC is a good starting point. It's very well documented and you need nothing more than the machine and its manual. There's also a sprite editor included with the Next, so you could create an entire game just using that and the manual. I spent hours of my life as a kid typing BASIC in my Spectrum Plus 3, and now I have a Next, I want to write code in something that fits my way of thinking more closely. I'm too used to modern programming tools. On the opposite end of the Spectrum, next we have Z80 Assembly. I spent a year writing code in Z80 for my RC2014, so this is quite familiar to me now. I don't mind Z80, it's one step up from typing opcodes into the CPU and is the fastest way to talk to the machine. If you're trying to get the most out of the machine, writing an assembly is the way to go. It does have the drawback of being quite time consuming though, and it's easy to get lost in giant code listings if you're not careful. If you want to write Z80, you can either use an assembler called SJ Asum Plus on a PC to cross assemble your code or the Z88DK, C and Z80 compiler that does the same kind of thing. There's also an assembler that runs on the Next itself called Odin, so you don't even have to use a PC. The final option is to write code in C. As I mentioned before, there's a C compiler called Z88DK, which supports the Next and pretty much anything with a Z80 CPU inside it. It even lets C and Z80 be mixed together giving the freedom to use Z80 if necessary. There is a trade-off though, and it comes in the form of added complexity when developing software. There isn't a C compiler that runs on the Next itself, so a computer is required and the resulting compiled code then needs copying onto the SD card of the Next. This is why I mentioned you can join in by using an emulator. If you want to use C, setting up an emulator is going to be saving a lot of time and effort. So from all those possibilities, I've chosen a specific workflow. And this is where if you're a developer, you probably have your own system and workflow that's different to mine. If you do, let me know in the comments below. The more different ways there are, the more people can find out their own way that works for them. I'm using Visual Studio Code for editing. It's a modern editor with features I've now started taking for granted. Things like syntax highlighting, code folding, IntelliSense and all that kind of stuff. Then I'm using CSpect as the emulator and Z88DK installed inside WSL2 for the compiler. My reasons for using Windows Subsystem for Linux will be explained shortly. To get the code into the Next, I was using Visual Studio Code's add-on called DZOG, which sent the code straight into the machine. But for reasons I don't quite understand at the moment, I can't get it working with any code that I write myself. So instead, I have another tool called NextSync. All that does is copies files via Wi-Fi to the Next SD card. I'll be using that for testing the code on real hardware. General debugging is going to be done in CSpect. 
All of this is fired off from a custom task in Visual Studio Code and a makefile. I come from the world of one button compiles and I need to quickly see code running after typing it in. None of this setup was available as some sort of package to install though, I had to create it all myself. And this is a point to bear in mind, there's no official Spectrum Next Dev Kit. If you're used to writing code in Windows and installing Visual Studio, be prepared to do some crafting of a dev kit yourself. However, this is also a good thing. I know there are people watching this who are wondering why I go to this much effort when all they do is run Windows, open up Z88DK built for Windows, run something like Notepad++, and just drag the code from compiler straight into C-Spec's open window. I do it this way because it's what makes sense to me. If you've got an alternate setup, let us know in the comments. I'm not trying to present the best way of doing this, I'm learning as I go along, so if you've got any interesting tips, I really want to hear them. Here is my setup and the steps I go through to get code running. It all starts with WSL2, which has an installation of Debian in it. I'm using WSL2 because I want a real Linux build environment, it's what I'm familiar with. I don't want the hassle of dual booting my PC into Linux though, or having it trapped inside a virtual machine. I want as little friction between having time to do some coding and getting a result on the screen. I had to manually compile Z88DK, there are no pre-compiled versions for WSL2. It was quite a lengthy process, but it is very straightforward. If you're a programmer, compiling a compiler is no different to compiling anything else. Because my code editor is VS Code, and it natively understands WSL2, to make the whole thing easier, I created a make file which I just copied from the Z88DK website and tweaked a little bit, and a custom task in VS Code to make running it from inside the editor easy. Also, I can just go into the source directory now and type make like normal. All of this effort has produced a single directory structure with everything needed to start a next C project. From now on, all I have to do is copy it to a new name and edit a few files to update the path. To run the code, I have the option of using next sync to copy the code into my actual next and run it from there. I imagine doing this when there is a decent amount of code to test rather than just basic development. For that, I'm going to use cspect as I can use dzog to automatically load the code for me. So there we go. A bit of a look at how we can write code on the next and an explanation of what I'm going to be using. I'm documenting this as I go along, so as I learn more things, it might change. This is actually version 2 of this video, because after trying my first setup for a while it wasn't that great, and I decided to ditch the whole thing and restart. I'll also be experimenting with ways to present this information. I need to get a balance between it being interesting enough for random passers-by to watch, but also technical enough for anyone who's actually wanting to find things out. I'll try and keep each video relatively short and to about one point, rather than it being a long ramble over many different topics. I have a website too, where I'll put more of the code and any files that I think are useful, and any more long depth explanations that are easier to write down. So go and have a look there if you want to see anything that I've shown so far. So this is the part of the video where I have to remind you that if you got this far, well done, you are one of the few people that does, and maybe if you like this video you give it a thumbs up, that'd be really good, and if you want to see more videos then subscribe and use a way of telling me that you do. It'll also help you find these videos because I'm still quite a small channel. But until next time, see you later.